This is a tutorial on fluid pressure. Uh, the pressure one feels when one is immersed in a fluid like water or air. We're going to look at three different aspects of fluid pressure right now. Um, the concepts of what it means to feel the pressure. Uh, Pascal's principle, which looks at how pressure is distributed throughout a fluid and how to calculate the amount of pressure one feels when submerged. Uh, the last part is critical to the rest of the chapter, so pay very close attention to it, look it over, and make sure you understand it conceptually as well as mathematically. Okay, so as the it was indicated earlier, fluid pressure is uh, pressure felt when surrounded uh, by a fluid inside and outside. Okay, and we'll see the ramifications of that with some demonstrations later. So when you have a generic object immersed in a fluid, it is not going to feel pressure just from the top. It's going to feel pressure from all sides. Okay, And if this was hollow, it would feel it from the inside unless it was sealed off. So we have pressure from all sides and it has a very important point. It has equal magnitude on all faces. Okay, so even though the amount of force might be different on the face, if you compensate for the area, you'll get the same pressure. If this was not true, okay, if you had differential pressure on different faces because of areas or shapes or whatever, then the object would um, accelerate. All right, the differential in pressure is like a differential force due to differences in pressure. So when you put something under water, it's not going to be pushed left, right. because of shape. Okay? And another important aspect is that the fluid force due to that pressure is always perpendicular to the face. Otherwise, again, you would have a component that would be along a certain direction which would push it one way or another. Okay, so an important principle that comes out of uh, fluid pressure is Pascal's principle, which basically says within a fluid, the pressure exerted in one part is transmitted equally to all other parts. Okay, so the best example of this is with a hydraulic pump. So let's say I have a fluid in here, okay, represented by all this, and I exert a force, let's say, around here. When I exert a force, and I exert a force in this piston um, through this fluid, that pressure is felt throughout, and it's transmitted throughout. So it will exert a force on this piston in the upward direction. The interesting thing about this is even though the pressure will be the same throughout, that doesn't mean the force felt throughout will be the same. Okay, so looking at this mathematically, at the diagram, from Pascal's principle, P at point A equals P at point B throughout, and pressure by definition is force of A divided by the area of A, and that's going to equal the force on B divided by the area of B. So if the areas are different, then the forces will be different, and we can see from this diagram that the force acting on B is equal to the force that was acting on A times the ratio of the area of B all divided by the area of A. So in this particular case, the area of B is much larger than the area of A. Let's say in this case the area is 16 times as large. Uh, then the force acting on B is going to be 16 times as great. So it's acting like a machine. We're essentially multiplying force um, by reducing area and having an equal pressure throughout. Okay, so the last concept we want to look at is how to calculate fluid pressure. And it's a fairly straightforward derivation, but again, it has very important ramifications, something you want to study um, and look at extensively. Okay, so this represents a fluid once again, and I don't have a box in a fluid, but I'm just delineating, let's say, a sphere or a a cubic area or zone within that, okay? And let's say we are a depth below the water of H, okay? So H can be thought of as a height, um, but it's in this case, it's really more depth. So we are a certain depth below, and within this little point, which we're surrounded by water, we're going to look at a particular, like I said, volume. Okay, so the pressure at this depth is due to the cumulative weight on top of that point. Okay, so you need gravity acting here, but there's water pushing down on it because it's underneath it. And that weight can be calculated as, of course, as m, mass of the water, multiplied by g. And the mass of the water on top of that point is the density of water divided by the volume of the water at that point times g.
Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We're going to see this rho VG later on and understand where it comes from. It's nothing more than weight of the fluid, not the weight of any object that I put there. Okay, so pressure by definition is force per unit area. So what we have then is the force is rho VG divided by area. And in this shape, and any other shape for that matter, volume divided by area is nothing more than the depth, or in this particular cube, the height. So we can see that the pressure felt due to a fluid when you're submersed is equal to the density of the fluid. The more dense it is, the more pressure you're gonna feel. G, okay, ultimately this is because of weight. And then, perhaps surprisingly, the depth. H, how far below you are. So it's independent of the amount of water in the whole system. It doesn't matter whether you're in a, a well or an ocean. If you're a certain depth below it, you're going to feel the same pressure. So this has very important implications. Okay, the most obvious is the further you go below a fluid, the more pressure you feel. All right, that's the key takeaway, or one of the important takeaways. And this has many implications, it's diving issues, popping ears, faucet pressure, and other things. And we'll talk more about this in class and do some demonstrations. Another interesting consequence of this is liquids will fill containers so that the level is the same in all parts regardless of the shape. Um, again, this is best seen with the demonstration. It'll become more obvious, but one of the important consequences is, is the idea of siphons. You can get water to move from a high level to a low level um, pretty much uh, on its own because w the level, the water wants to seek its own level to pr equalize pressure. And perhaps the most important, any object will always feel more pressure um, on its bottom, if you will than on its top. And this is the whole basis for our next topic in this chapter, and that's buoyancy. Okay, so in other words, let's say we did submerge an actual box in this water. The, this part of the box is below, is further uh, below the surface, so it's going to feel greater pressure than any part on top. So you're going to get a pressure difference, and we'll see why that's very, very important. Okay, so let's look at two quick examples. All right, so exam problem one, what is the depth uh, fluid pressure on the Earth's surface if the density of air is given as above? And that's a previous problem. So if we go to this page, that was 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay. 1.29 um, and the depth of the atmosphere is 16 kilometers so this is a pretty straightforward pressure is rho gh which is equal to 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed times 16 times 10 to the 3 uh, meters that's our depth and of course times I'm just going to use G is 10. So this is going to equal, so I'll punch numbers in the calculator and I get 2 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. Okay, and then we say, hmm, what's going on here? We already learned that the air pressure is about half of this. Okay, so why are we have a disagreement here? Basically, it's because rho is depth dependent. In other words, we just gave the atmospheric pressure at the bottom and it drops off uh, with atmosphere, or excuse me, with height. And this goes towards an important distinction between liquids and solids. We said earlier that, in, or excuse me, liquids and gases. In liquids, the density is the same throughout because it's uh, non compressible. With gases, uh, are compressible, so as you pile air on top of each other, it's going to be more dense at the bottom than at the top. So this value for um, density of air is really for um, at sea level. If you go higher and higher, it drops off. So this is not the most accurate way of calculating it, but at least it gives us a force uh, zeroth order magnitude of the um, atmospheric pressure. Okay, the next one is a fairly common type of problem. We have an open manometer, which is just a tube that's shaped like a U, and we have a fluid in here that's not at the same level, okay? And the reason they're not at the same level is because there's some external pressure pushing down on it. 
In other words, if we it took away this external pressure, we would see these two levels the same. Other, um, and that goes the consequence that of rho GH. Okay, so we want to be able to figure out uh, the density of the liquid based on that. All right, so let's look at all the pressures, even though we're going to see. So we're going to have a pressure on the left side, and we have a pressures on the right side. So on the left side, we have a external pressure. We also have atmospheric pressure, which we're going to call P naught. Okay, and I'm going to take zero to be this dashed line here, so there's no fluid pressure on the left. So that's going to equal the pressure on the right because it's in equilibrium. So on the right, we don't have an external pressure. We do have atmospheric pressure still. And then we do have a fluid pressure equal to this column from the top to the dashed line right here. We don't have to consider anything below the dashed line because they're at the same level, so they're going to exert equal pressure on each other. So this can be calculated as the density of the liquid times G times that particular H. So we see that the atmospheric pressure cancels out and then the density of that liquid is equal to the external pressure divided by G times H. Which makes sense. If we increase the external pressure, the H would have to go up like we'd expect to keep the density constant.